Hello y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. I am so excited to paint with you today. As always, we are going to be doing a, well, I should say I am going to be doing a very unplanned, um, unscripted um, glass vase um, today. That's the subject I've chosen to do. I had a hankering for painting some glass today and I thought let's turn on the camera and see what we get. So here we go. I'm going to draw out a little glass face for you. We're going to add some flowers to it for fun um, and then go from there. I love painting glass um, in the way that I'm going to do it. It's very simple, not getting complicated. We're not using a reference. We're not trying for hyper realism, but it is fun. It is textured. You can add any kinds of color that you want. We're going to do it in like an aqua color or the cobalt teal, which is the name of the color in my palette. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this kind of bent rectangle. Okay, so it's a rectangle, but it's got a curve to it. And this is going to be the lip of the top of the little vase. And I'm going to give it a neck, kind of a short neck, not too long. And then for my shape of my vase, and you can draw any vase you want, but for my shape of my vase, I'm actually going to square it off to start. So I'm just going to draw a line across this way. And then I'm going to try to make sure this section and this section are about the same distance from the neck. Try to make sure my line is parallel to the ground. And then I'm going to bring the sides down kind of to about here. I want this to almost be square like, and then I'm going to round off the bottom. Okay. So that's going to be the bottom of my vase. Now I'm not going to leave it this kind of weird square slash round shape. I am going to actually round off the top up here. But the reason I draw the square at the top is because it allows me to um, create these rounded curves that I'm going to create here. So for this short little bottle, but now it's easier for me to match this shape to this corner here than it would just to freehand it just so I don't have a super wonky bottle. So there we go. So I can kind of match these by eye a little easier than I would if I just drew the curves without any kind of guidelines whatsoever. So then we can erase that square. I didn't, I didn't even think that this would be a drawing slash watercolor painting lesson all in one, but that's what we get sometimes. All right. So I have this nice little short kind of bud vase. We're going to put just two or three little flowers in it of some kind. I don't even know yet. But let's focus on painting the glass. I'm going to lighten up my lines, my pencil lines, just so when we're painting this glass, we're not seeing a lot of pencil lines through it. So you're going to try to follow along, but I know you can't really see uh, my lines very well. So I'm going to start with this cobalt teal and aqua color would be great. Phthalo blue and a little bit of white um, watered down would kind of get you close to this as well. So with glass, there's a lot of highlights and there's a lot of shadows. I'm just going to go in and start painting areas that I think should be in shadow. When you look at a piece of glass, whether it's a cup on the counter or a vase, um, and depending on the light in the room, you're going to have lots of different light sources and lots of different reflections off that glass piece. And all we're trying to do here, I don't have a particular reference in front of me. I'm not trying for hyper realism. I just want to communicate that this glass is a color. So this is a colored piece of glass. If it was white, or clear, I would be using all very neutral gray um, to do this same process, but I'm letting this glass be a nice aqua teal color. So I'm really finding my way with a light version of this all the way around. I'm looking for areas, areas along the edge of the glass or near the edge are going to, and around the neck of the glass here where the changes shape. So there's scoops here where it changes shape. 
these are where our shadows and highlights are going to play with each other. So leaving a highlight here, and we're going to put another layer on. So I do want to leave some areas pure white, but some areas like right here, it's not pure white. It's a very, very watered down version of this teal color. But this is pure white. This is pure white still. So leaving a few little pure white highlights while some areas are going to be really light teal and other areas have a little bit more of a shadow to them. Along the base will be darker. And then from the base, I like to pull up these strokes of shadow under the neck here or under the lip and around the neck. So I encourage you to just kind of play with it. And once everything is kind of wet and it's wet on wet, you can even get more playful. You might have to let things dry a little bit as you continue to add darker color. So I'm going to go up here to the top to the lip. The lip and the neck are where the glass is generally, and the base is generally thickest. So usually it will have the most shadow. It will ref reflect the least amount of light. It will definitely still have highlights in it though. It'll still catch light and reflect light, but usually so you can leave some white areas. And when you first start doing these, I would encourage you to paint out, paint a whole bunch of them. Paint like a whole like page full of different shapes. They're so fun. I feel like it's so satisfying. So I'm feeling good here. I'm feeling like this has a nice color to it. I'm going to run some really dark color along the bottom there and a little bit lighter version along the back here. This is still wet, that's fine. I just want the bottom to look like it's heavier and thicker, okay? So you saw I just ran that along kind of that back edge. It's bleeding out a little bit, I'm gonna let it, but you can see it does give that illusion that there's a thickness or a weight to the bottom. All right, so we're done with our glass. We left some highlights. You can continue to add some darker areas. Um, I really like how this has come out, so I'm not going to touch it anymore. You can overdo it and get yourself to the point where it's just going to be a flat wash over the whole thing if you're not careful and you get a little too carried away. But remember, you just need to leave areas of highlight, medium tone, and shadow, and you will be golden. Um, work with the curves of your vase or whatever glass object you're painting. So this has a curve here. So it's a little bit darker at curved areas and at junctures like the lip and the base. I just add a little more here. Now I have to play with it just a bit. And then also towards the edges, there are often going to be areas that might be a little darker. All right, so I'm going to let that completely dry. We'll come back, add a shadow, and add some flowers. But there is our lovely little glass bud vase. All right, while that continues to dry, I'm going to pull out some sap green for stems. And I'm just going to put in two stems. I'm going to have one go this way and I'm going to, it's going to overlap a little bit of a section. So this rim is kind of curved and then it's going to skip this part. And my vase is still a little wet and I'm okay with that because I want this, um, the stem to bleed out a little bit and become a little bit lighter because as it goes inside the glass, the glass is going to refract some of that light. It's going to change kind of the look and shape and feel of that stem. So same thing on this side. I 
And this area was dry already, so it kind of did its thing up there and then didn't do it down here. So I'm just going to mess it up a little bit with just a little bit of water because it was already dry. All right, now what flowers are we going to put in this vase? This aqua color, I think um, a yellow type flower would go really well with this. I think I'm just going to do um, like a very simple little sunflower. So I'm going to start with a little brown. This is um, a burnt umber or um, a raw umber, I think. And I'm just going to make a little kind of squished gumdrop shape here. Okay, I'm gonna do one that way and we'll do one kind of sticking up like this. Now these are gonna be a little bit trickier because we're gonna have to use some foreshortening, meaning that part of the petals are gonna be coming out toward the viewer, towards us. So we can't just paint them flat. Uh, so that we have to keep that in mind as we paint. So along the edges, they're going to be kind of their full width, but I'm going to have them curve up this way a little bit. And again, these are going to be super simple sunflowers. We're not going to, or even they could be maybe ah, considered Gerber daisies. We're going to have to put in another flower, I think, or a falling petal. Look at this. Ready? falling petals. There we go. Mistake. Happy accidents. Um, we're going to have to leave a few empty spots for those falling petals. I'm glad y'all are forgiving for me. <laughs> You're so good to me. You're going to be like, yay, you left in that accident. So these petals going away from us, they're getting shorter and almost look a little chunkier. Okay. Um, and then the ones on this side, this is where it's going to be the same thing. They're going to be kind of flat. I'm going to leave kind of a little space there on the edge that I'm not going to fill in. That can be these little falling petals. I actually love that mistake. I think it's super sweet, but, um, we have those petals falling out there. What a great accident. Talk about the ideal for a happy accident. And I'm just going to fill in this edge just a little bit there. Okay. So same thing with this one. I'm just going to turn my page a little so that I am not um, putting my hand right in my other flower. So these ones on this side, again, a little bit shorter. They don't have to be perfect petal shapes. They're going away from us. We can't actually see the full shape of the petal. So they just need to have some spikiness on the edges. And then on the side, they're kind of flatter this way. And then what I'm going to do to kind of sell this a little more, I'm going to take some of this sap green and I'm going to create a little bit of a wider base here. that attaches to my flowers so we can really feel like we're seeing the side of this flower. There we go. And just below the petals here, I'm going to create this wider base that goes up into the flower. And then if you want to add some leaves on, you can. You don't have to, let's see, we'll add on just a few. I don't want to get carried away because I kind of really love this really simple design. And we'll do one further out here. And it's really easy to get carried away with leaves. 
especially if your first ones you're not like satisfied with how you made them and so these are kind of low down in and I don't want to get too far over our little buds there. There we go. I'm going to leave it like that. I think this is super sweet and simple. What I am going to do lastly is just add a shadow to the base of this give it some grounding. Now the glass itself, I think looks very three dimensional. I think it's really sold by this roundedness of the bottom and the shadows here on the neck, but let's give it a little bit of a connection to, I want to use a really light gray color, a connection to the, the, um, the ground or the surface that it's on. So I'm going to make this slanted shape here that's going to mimic this part okay off to the side and then narrow it for the neck but I'm not going to I'm not going to worry too much about it being an identical copy okay just gonna be slanted off to the side it gets narrower it gets a little wider at the top flowers are sticking out of it there we go. And that just gives it a little um, weight, a little bit of weightiness to the bottom. Add a little bit more really close to the bottom of this. And there we go. And we are done. So there is our really simple glass bud vase with two little um, Gerber Daisy sunflower-esque type flowers. I love this little happy accident with the falling petals here. I think it gives it such personality. Don't forget your shadow to really ground it down to the bit to the surface. And then you are done. I hope, whoops, camera shake. I hope you will practice this one. I hope you'll paint a lot of different colors and different shapes and styles of the glass um, vase. It can be so much fun. Um, enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel uh, as well as leave comments. If you have questions, I do my best to get back to everybody who leaves a comment. Also, super thanks are such a wonderful thing. And I've received some wonderful super thanks um, comments, which is where you can leave a comment, but also um, provide um, support there to me as an artist through the comment. So thank you. Um, Tabor Ayers, who has been uh, the super thanks uh, uh, superstar this particular week, um, and all those who have also given those in the past. Thank you so much. I can't do what I do without your support. So thank you. Um, happy painting, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.